What's up guys, it's Johnny O with Tito Tech Tube, and today I want to show you how you can actually remove the uninstallable apps in Windows 10 using PowerShell. So if you've used Windows 10 for any amount of time yet, you've probably already seen that there's some of these apps in here that are by the Microsoft Corporation that come pre-installed on a fresh load of Windows 10 that you cannot uninstall. So like Groove Music, uninstall is grayed out. Maps, grayed out. Messaging, grayed out. So on and so forth. There are several apps like this out of box. Uh, so how do you get rid of them if you don't want them on your machine? Well, you use PowerShell. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to open PowerShell. So you just type in PowerShell. Before you even finish the word, it'll auto-populate. Uh, so I'm using the ISE because that allows me to save it as a script that can be run later on as a PowerShell script. Um, you can just type in the commands individually in PowerShell, but I recommend creating the script because then, say so you buy a new machine, you want to do this again, you have the script already saved, you throw it on a flash drive, or you have multiple machines in your house. So like I have my desktop, my wife's desktop, her laptop. I can easily just write the script, run it on my machine, and then subsequently run it on the other machines as well, save myself a little bit of time. So you want to right click the ISC and do run as administrator, which I've already done here. And so there's two sides of the coin here. So number one, I'm going to show you how to remove the applications that are already installed. Okay. The second half of that is, so if I do this, uninstall these applications and then say, I want to create an account on this computer for my wife. I create her an account. I run this script that I've written to remove the already installed applications. It removes it from my user profile, removes the install from my user profile. The problem with that is whenever she logs in and her user profile is created for the first time, it's going to install these because these are all provisioned applications that get installed on each new user profile that gets created. So the first time she logs in, Windows is going to create her profile and it's going to reinstall these apps under her profile. So I still won't see them, however they're going to show up on her profile now. So now I've got to do all this work again. So the second thing we want to do is remove the provision packages so that it can't reinstall them. Uh, sorry if the camera is a little bit of camera shake guys, uh, this is on my monitor and this desk isn't super sturdy and I tend to be very in motion as I speak. Um, so I'm kind of shaking the desk a little bit. I'm going to try and reduce that as much as possible. So let's go and jump right into it. So first thing we're going to do is look at uninstalling the things that are already installed on the machine. So we're going to use a command here, git apex package, and we're going to put in the parameter, the switch here, all users. So this will go and get the apex package for all users. So if we do this, let's just go ahead and run this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here, you'll see that the name parameter here, Microsoft.Minecraft UWP, okay, that's not so bad, Microsoft.Xbox app, but as you scroll through these, some of these are going to get kind of convoluted, and you're not necessarily going to know exactly how to do all of these to get them uninstalled. By the way, I have this really zoomed in, so hopefully you guys can see it really well. Um, yeah, so if we zoom in a little, or scroll up a little bit higher up here, we should see some that have a little bit more convoluted name, like Microsoft.net.native.runtime.1.3. That's not something you necessarily want to get rid of, but there's other things in here named like that. So the point is, to make it easier on ourselves, what we're going to do is what's called in PowerShell piping. So if you do shift and then the um, forward slash key, you should get this uh, pipe right here on the screen, this guy right here. Uh, so we're going to pipe that into a where object. So this is essentially going to do um, a SQL query, uh, basically. But this is going to do a query on all this data here. And in curly braces, oops, curly braces, we're going to do dollar underscore. Basically what dollar underscore does is it's going to say, okay, all these results that I've just got are going to be loaded into an array. And dollar underscore is going to tell PowerShell that I want to step through this array, and in each instance of uh, these objects in this array, I want to look for the name. So I'm going to do dollar underscore dot name, and then do another, uh, do a hyphen or attack as it's called. Uh, so the switch we're going to put in here is like. So it's going to say anything that looks like basically, uh, and then I'm going to do a single quote, an asterisk. And let's start with Maps. Let's say we want to get rid of the Maps app. Right? So now this is telling PowerShell, I want to get the Apex package for all users where the object 
name is like maps. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a let me get down here. So CLS will clear our screen to clean it up a little bit. And we're going to do a run, and you see we get Windows Maps, Windows Maps. So I have it for two users that it shows up for. All right, so how do we get rid of it now? We're going to do another pipe. So shift forward slash space. And what we're going to do here is do a remove dot apex package on all users. So now if I, I keep pressing enter there. So now if I press the play button here and run that, what should happen is I should no longer be able to go down here and find maps. And you'll see if I go down to M, maps is now gone. And if I go over here, you'll see maps is now gone from the apps and features list. So this has uninstalled the maps app from my user profile. So the reason why we want to do this as a script, I'm going to be lazy because I'm a developer and I'm going to copy and paste and we're going to replace maps with uh, message or is it message? Was it messenger or messaging? Messaging. So we're going to replace that with messaging. And we're going to replace this with groove. So we'll just stick with these three apps just to keep it simple. And you can keep doing this as many times as you want. All right, so sorry about that, guys. I ran into a little bit of an issue. Uh, first issue I had was when I ran the second time, I still had maps in here trying to be removed, and it aired out because uh, maps couldn't be removed since it was already removed once. Uh, so it caused an issue. Uh, the second one looks like it failed because of the first one, and the third one failed because for some reason when I searched groove, um, it didn't find it by Groove, but it did find it by Music, and it is now removed. Messaging, uh, scroll down. Messaging, Maps, and Groove Music are all gone. So, that being said, um, this works best if you're doing it on a fresh install. If you're doing it on an already in use install, what I would do is run the query first before you run the remove side of it just to make sure you're finding the right thing and not getting things that you don't want to get rid of. Let's do Xbox because I know it'll come up with multiple results. So if we do that and scroll up we'll see we get the Xbox app. We get Xbox game overlay. We get Xbox speech to text overlay. We get Xbox game callable UI we get Xbox Identity Provider. And so that's just an example of how uh, you can kind of shoot yourself in the foot with this, trying to remove stuff. Uh, honestly, you're trying to remove Xbox, you don't care if you move all of this, which by the way, you can't actually remove all the Xbox. Um, and just to note, you cannot remove all the apps. Uh, you cannot remove Cortana, you cannot remove, um, there's one more now, I can't remember what it is. Uh, if you remove Windows Store, you may cause yourself problems later on down the road, but last I checked, that one is one you can remove, but I do not recommend it. So that's how you do for already installed applications. So let's go and start a new one. And let's do get apex provision package. Right? So on this one, you're going to do provision package online. Now remember, we're going to do this one so that we can remove the provision package so that it won't reinstall if a new user profile is created. That's basically what happens uh, here. So we're going to do where object. Do the same thing dollar underscore dot but here we need to change this up a little bit for apex provision package we don't want to use name and again intellisense here is helpful because you see i get autocomplete options here package name is what we're going to try and match by like and we'll do the same ones we did before we'll do maps and then we'll do and i'm going to go ahead and do this the right way the first time and do the um Query first before I do the remove. Uh, so we did maps, then we did messaging, and then we did. I'm going to do groove first just to see what it comes up with. And we'll come down here and do a CLS just to make it easy. Run that. And so we just get messaging and maps. So groove just for some reason does not come up with anything. So let's see what it comes up when we do the correct query. Zune music, that is why. So the groove 
music app is actually stored as the Zune music app. That would be why we had an issue trying to find it by Groove. So now what we can do is add in our oops, add in our pipe and then add in a AppX or sorry, remove AppX provisioned package and I don't believe you need online for the remove but we'll throw it in there anyways just to be safe I don't recall to be honest and copy and paste is our friend and now what we're going to do is do a play button and you'll get this right here so each this doesn't uh, tell you explicitly what it's doing but we know that you know this is running in order so we see our first one online true restart needed false so it basically tells us that it worked uh, online true restart needed false so as you see these populating here that's basically just how you know that it worked you get this and not an error message so we know that now these three packages have been successfully removed so if I add my wife an account on this computer now have her log into it these apps should not be created all right and that's basically it so if you want to save these you just come over here, hit the save button and then you can just call it you know remove package whatever you want to call it or call it uninstall and then give it the name of the apps that you want to uninstall and you could run these in the same script so you can just copy all this and take that cut it out of there uh, and then paste it and you can run these all from the same script that's perfectly fine so uh, once you do that you can just save it to uh, a USB and run it on your other machine now another issue that you may run into uh, this may turn into kind of a long video sorry guys this is very unscripted so hopefully this doesn't get too long but what you can do uh, if you run into an issue where you try and run it and it basically uh, it may come back and give you an error saying that basically PowerShell uh, scripts cannot be run on this machine due to machine policy or something to that effect if you go into PowerShell and do set execution policy you can do a or oops there we go execution policy and then you want to set it to you can set it say to unrestricted and then run it um, I don't recommend leaving it that way honestly what I would probably do is maybe by default put it as restricted just to help protect your machine and then whenever you want to run a script you can set it to unrestricted um, but by setting it to restricted by default and that is fine you can help protect your machine a little bit from uh, you know if a PowerShell script gets included in like a uh, Microsoft Word macro or something like that that gets launched on your machine potentially this could save your tail <laughs> essentially alright guys I think I'm gonna go and cut it off there because I could keep going all night talking about PowerShell and different things you can do here let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more videos like this if you want to see me do more PowerShell uh, related videos and PowerShell scripting videos uh, go ahead and hit that like button if you liked the video hit the dislike if you didn't and leave me a comment down below let me know what I could do better if you didn't like the video hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of my content and make sure to follow me on Twitter as well as check out my patreon page that I'll have linked in the description down below alright guys as always, thanks for watching. It's Johnny O signing out.